what's up is now what's left is right chasing stars and holding view i can't see the end but we'll see it through Oh, I didn't think I was going to make it on time there, folks. Oh, nick of everything. All right, well, as the uh, Discord message mentioned, we're starting off in a star sim scenery city, Philadelphia. I mean, Philadelphia, sorry. Don't mean to offend those of you from Philadelphia. Oh, wait, I did it again. Anyway, um, we are starting today, as the title says, out of here. Welcome aboard, folks. We're going to get this flight in uh, somehow, some way, but we will do it. Um, we are in, like I said, Philadelphia, headed to Charleston. Now, there is no scenery out there I've found that works for Charleston. I thought I saw something out there. Uh, couldn't find it on such short, you know, quick and grab. So we will just hit the default. I'm sure it's just as good here in X-Plane 12. So Tolis A321 with the conventional engines stands ready to begin our odyssey. So I hope you all can jump aboard, come in. The water, well, the water will be comfortable once we get down to Charleston. I can't ever speak for up here in the Northeast. You just never know, folks. So, but anyway, one thing and why I have it aimed, you know how normally I'm down at people level looking up at the plane. I'm looking down, kind of hoping we're going to get a train to come through. That's what I get for hoping and thinking. Um, they decide not to run. They must be on strike. Who knows? Uh, but anyway... Uh, right out here between the garages and the terminal is the um, uh, Jersey Transit, I think, don't quote me on this one, Amtrak runs through here. And uh, yeah, there's a stop here at the airport on their way to wherever it is the terminating point is in the real world. So they've actually the got the group has done a phenomenal job uh, with both this airport and um st louis except i can't seem to get st louis to work in x-plane 11. so oh well you know it it happens we'll just uh we'll just make do with the best we can so but anyway let's hop up in the uh, cockpit get this bird flying shall we again <laughs> folks if you know how to fly an a319 or an a320 well, the A321 has a couple extra switches, but that's about it. Other than the fact it's longer and all that good stuff. A little heavier here. and Each one is a little different weight-wise. But overall, they kept the cockpit pretty much the same. 
So that part of the equation is actually pretty easy to learn. Now, the rest of the plane and procedures, eh, that's a different ballgame. But at least you already have the muscle memory to know uh, where to reach and who to punch in the plane when something goes out. So uh, let's get going here. We're going to bring in Sim Toolkit and uh, get things going. I'll be up on that Sim here shortly. I don't like sitting on the ramp on VATSIM with all of that uh, noise. I don't mean to insult anyone with all that noise out there. People just got to chatter to chatter. And uh, so I, I stay off as long as I can. And then when we're ready to go, hey, folks, the plane's moving. I'm not sitting. So uh, that's just the way I fly. So... Anyway, we're here. We're uh, with Sim Toolkit. We'll get it brought up over here so you all can see it. And uh, let's get right into it, shall we? We are flying for Virtual American. Um, I warn everyone. Um, read. Learn before you hit join. There's a lot to this airline, folks. They... They require specificity, meaning the aircraft has to be the right one with the right engines, right paint scheme, right this, right that. Uh, if it flies upside down, you got to fly upside down. Just kidding uh, to the CEO. He already probably hates me enough with their survey going on, but hey, just being honest with you, sir. Been honest with you a couple times. Meh. Yeah, you gave me a good dress down a couple times, and I'm going to keep at it on you. So, But anyway, um, that's between me and them. But I, I highly recommend the airline if you like flying as real as it gets. Um, if you go with that motto that the uh, old simulators of Microsoft lived by, there's someone to check out. Um, they really do push you to the real limits. So, just a, a little aside before we get in. And uh, in case you go to commercial break and you miss uh, some of my uh, uh, commentary or what you were looking for, it's, it's going to be on YouTube. The good, the bad, the ugly, as I like to say it. And I've had some pretty ugliness on here. so uh, But it's all up there, folks, for you to see. I hope learn from my boo-boos, mistakes, and uh, cuts and scrapes so that you get to be a better pilot. So, all right. So we're about to come out of commercial, so I am just going to get right into this so we can get right to the flight. We got a 500-mile flight ahead of us from Philadelphia to Charleston. By the way, if I haven't said it, Charleston is one of those places I would love to live. Um just can't afford it <clears throat> heck i could barely afford <laughs> where i'm at no seriously charleston isn't a wealthy city but because of all of the closeness to the atlantic and the uh, historic nature of the city it is a pricey place to live <clears throat> so with that all said that's where we're headed uh we're gonna head out of here with thirty-eight thousand eight hundred seventy pounds of payload that breaks down there's uh, 169 souls just chomping at the bit. I, albeit uh, maybe with their fingernails all bitten off, uh, to fly with Mike. Uh, 9,295 pounds of cargo. And uh, our route today is, well, you can read it there. So, cost index dispatch gave us 27 and graciously 36,000 today. So, we'll take it all. Whew, I'm exhausted, folks. I think it's time for crew rest. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right, weather-wise. Weather here kind of looked a little, you know, you're not sure. But if you read the METAR here, winds are out of the south, 13 gusting to 22. Uh, 10 miles we got of visibility. That's good. No foghorns needed. And uh, Hawker, again, broke the sky. Man, why do you keep breaking the sky? I got a fix. No, seriously. 
broken uh, at the base of 4,500 feet. Another broken layer at base at uh, 15,000 and 30,000. So ceiling then means 4,500 feet. Perfectly legal for you to fly your little Piper Arrows as well as your A321s. Um, also, in the remarks, you can probably see it. CBs, cumulus, distant to the north, moving northeast. Meaning, if it's north and moving northeast, it's moving, that's right, away. <clears throat> Thumbs up, Charleston. Now here, I do expect thunderstorms. I think they actually right now have one. Uh, however, this is a really good METAR to learn on. Okay, obviously the first block, here's your time, here's your winds, 208 knots. Okay, uh, seven miles visibility. So currently, that's a thumbs up for us to be able to go. Light rain. You know, at least it's rain. Hey, yeah, it could be worse. Uh, few important clouds, base 600 feet. Few base 1,500 feet. So, folks, had these said broken or overcast, then we start thinking, especially the 600, can't we depart? All right, uh, but the ceiling... Currently, as of 2223 Zulu, 9,500 feet, folks. That's VFR. You have VFR weather. I really wouldn't recommend flying VFR down there, but by rule, you're legal. <clears throat> um, however, thunderstorm moving south, CB distance southeast and southwest. So, Tells me yeah, it could be a little stormy when we get there, so eh, the cabin may get a little smelly and the barf bags may be used a little bit. <laughs> so, all right, uh, moving on up. So, basically, uh, you can see these are the thunderstorms moving away, or uh, cumulus moving away. Got a little cell here, there, and, you know, smattered about, but overall, not bad. Matter of fact, I think this big batch up here, Detroit, pushing towards uh, Toronto, are remnants of barrel. So, I think. Not seeing further back, I can't, you know, definitively say that. But anyway, so there you have it, folks. That's our uh, pre-brief. Let's go fly with Mike. second here folks all right there we go then I didn't want to cough in your ear there <clears throat> but I'll clear my throat uh, but anyway uh, so let's get into it shall we all right big thing that's already happened is the captain forgot his checklist hang on let me uh, go find it in operations ah, just kidding no, really, I did forget to open that up. <laughs> oh, where is it? There it is. <laughs> and I do like having it. Like I said, or on other flights, folks, when you fly, uh, the variety we fly here, it is almost essential to have some kind of checklist to help you not forget something. Um, unfortunately, I don't have one for the 747. Thank God it's built into the EFB. I know y'all are going to say never was one. So that's why I, I really like having it. All right. So we got our flight plan created. Load performance information. We've kind of gone over charts. We'll go over. All right. Here we go, folks. Landing gear is down three green. Uh, flaps show zero right here. And they show up. Spoilers down, flaps are here, spoilers are here, parking brake set, and I've got the transponder to a point where it'll show on X pilot as mode C, making the controller happy in his happy place. 
All right, continuing on thrust levers. I like to just move them, one, to make sure they'll move when I want them to. And in other aircraft, it'll it'll kick the takeoff configuration. We actually have a button for that. Uh, start levers are down or off. And uh, start switch, I don't know what you actually call it. Uh, what do they call it? Oh, engine mode selector. Okay, is in normal. Straight up. All right, and moving on up. Cockpit door. Oh, let's look at that real quick. It's in the unlocked position. All right. All right, get your get your balance. I know we could have put you in vertigo there. My apologies. Uh, going up and down and up and down. <laughs> That's what it's going to be like into Charleston. Getting you ready for it. <laughs> All right, battery switches. Let's go ahead and click them off for now. Then back on, we should see a good charge, and we do. Uh, external power is available, external power is on. Cockpit lights first. Let's do all of them checked. All the bulbs from Sylvania are keeping us uh, well fed, if you have such stock. And they're all lit down there. All right, moving on. We need um, crew supply off, ground control on, and this also serves as a sound check. A little weak. Turned it up pretty. Oh, you know what? I know where it might be. That's a little better. And while we're here and doing checks, let's just check. Engine one fire check. Engine two or APU fire check. Engine two. Cargo smoke fire alarm check. This one takes the longest. All right, all good. All right, moving on. Uh, strobe lights are in auto. Well, not yet, but now they are. Uh, navs are in two. Uh, APU master will turn on, but we are going to pause, get down here, load up this aircraft. All right, uh, game plan for fuel. Oh, remember? Because I sure don't. 16,767 pounds. Oh, too much. 16,760, 16,008 will request the fuel truck. Next page, page four. Uh, let's keep this for now and see how we load out. And then over here, go to page two and put in 169. And we'll load them. All right. Now, if anything, we're going to be off by maybe 5,000 pounds. Goal we're going to be looking for over here on the EFB for zero fuel weight will be uh, 147,311 pounds. 146. All right, so... We could put in at least 200 in each side. Yeah, let's try it. All right, so come back here carefully when you do this, folks, and not accidentally kick off the uh, um, de-ice. A little warm for that. 147, 147, 195, add 200, we'd be, uh, we'd be over. So that'll work. Um, we got our fuel loading. We got our passenger counts. So we're in good shape here. All right. <clears throat> now, how are we doing on said, said fuel? We already fell. 16,800. We certainly are. Let's, uh, one last check. Yeah, fuel truck's gone. All right. 
Let's head back up, kick that APU over. Solid kick there. Get the little smoke light on. Okay, we're uh, clear, flap open. Um, just waiting on the APU. And then we're gonna really go through this pretty quick. Takeoff time planned. 52 minutes after the hour. So how's everybody's Tuesday going? Mine's been a busy one with the uh, job search. Uh, first off, uh, those of you who do pray, thank you so much for your prayers. Uh, we, I need a lot. Learned a lot today at unemployment, but... Um, Boy, implementing what I learned is tough. And hopefully pays off. That's the key. Again, thank you so much for your prayers. Uh, I think we're available. Let's get up here. We are. All right. So with us being available, probe heat's on. Putting the uh, bleed on. They can start boarding the aircraft. And we're good. All right, so continuing. Here we go. Okay, that works again. Working up. Now, one of these lights will go off as we bring the uh, um, IRUs to, to bear. Now, I moved it to status. Okay, that one's good. Uh, so that way we get a uh, how uh, long till uh, we... Uh, a line. Okay. And as you can tell, like all aircraft companies, even Airbus can't count. Last I checked, we don't count 132. I know there's another style of math. Maybe that works. Eh, you know, it's the way um, the aircraft companies do it. They're not the only one. Believe me, that one that starts with a B and boings, uh, yeah, they do it too. All right, so moving on up here, we got our lights set, leads on. We don't need economy because we're pretty heavily passengered, so we'll keep it normal. Alts are on because the engines are off and the fuel will keep off till we're done with big dude. Uh, Seatbelt and uh, no smoking and... Uh, Turn the dome off for now. Landing elevations auto. Uh, cross bleed is set to auto. And everything else is good either way. In the middle, everything looks good. Three green gear down. And uh, looking good. And finally, the radios are not set properly. But they will. All right, move that over. All right, big thing, folks, make sure on your X pilot, your mode C is green. That will put a frown on your air traffic controller of the moment to turn the frown around into a smile. 122.8 and mode C. To make your day more enjoyable, um, make sure you have your microphone set up and your speaker set up on the actual comm radio. You can verify it up in your uh, X pilot or whatever is used in the uh, dark side. Um, but just make sure you see transmit, receive, whatever that looks like on your client to fat sim. If you don't see mode C, move your selector switch from standby to X bonder to out off heck even if you have to ta only make sure your a deers is on also in this aircraft but it usually doesn't have a, a factor on it just in case try it okay so radios are set we'll get our squawk in a moment looking up uh, parking brake set again and everything looks good 
Alright, that means, folks, we are to that point of setting up the McDo. We're going to do this in kind of two pieces. Uh, first, um, we'll actually go through... I'm setting some things up here, so that's why a little kind of in, kind of out. Um, but uh, we're going to kind of get things set up and then go over and make sure numbers are correct and come back. Okay. All right. So first and foremost, do that. Uh, hit clear to get the GPS lost. Make sure your engines match the plane you're flying. Uh, virtual American guys, make sure you have the right tail number, right engines, right paint scheme. They check it all. How they do some of it, I don't know. But their uh, Pyrep system's pretty, uh, pretty insightful with the information delivered to them. All right, now, go to init. To be able to use init request, I don't even know if it puts it available to you. Go in and make sure you have a SimBrief account. Get your numerical SimBrief ID open up your polis iscs go to sound and account and in the account id put it in right there merrick not what your login id is to make it work go into your actual account get the numeric id stick it in there the rest of that and for that part read the manual up top is if you have the Neo, how to get that going. You know what I'm going to say. Read the manual. <laughs> really is helpful. Okay, so I'm just going to click init request. It's going to go reach out, pull in my latest flight. Still got a couple more things to do. When you see flight number, cruise, and all of that filled in, you're done. Before clicking align RS. If you have access to the charts, I have Navgraph charts, so I do. But if you do in a freeway, I'm sure there's people out there that would love to know. Um, you need, if you want to specify where you're actually at on the airport, we can do what I'm about to do. Go to charts, taxi, uh, parking gate with cords. Okay, we're in Charlie 20. So C17 through C24, that's a lot. So we want to look to make sure that that latitude right here says 39, 52.5. And then use the up down arrows to make it say such. Now to update the longitude, go over here, click the line select key. Now, for that one, we are looking for 75, 14.5. 75.14. Got to update. Up. Oh, that didn't work. So, you know what? Try the down arrow. Okay, 75, 14.5 west. 39, 52.5 north. Now, click a line. All right. So, when this right here, IRS in a line, three minutes, gets to goose egg, it'll eventually actually align, and all of this will go away. And you'll get GPS something, I forget exactly the words. All right. Now, what I always do, since we're still aligning, uh, I go over to the EFB. For page two. All right, and I compare and contrast. How do you get the page two? Right up here, the arrows. Click. Okay, so we have one four seven. I'll be gracious and say point two. And no, we're not that one four seven two. Just like you see slash. 27 to wow this thing was really off I don't think I've had it that bad in a while 
Okay, fuel 16.8, 16.8, that all worked out. Times look good. Go back to F plant, and we'll come back to this for the takeoff page. All right, we're two minutes away. I'm going to go ahead and start with uh, getting things ready to hear. All right, so before we can really get going, folks, we need a more accurate, uh, the heck did I click? Er, okay, there we go. A more accurate uh, idea of runways and all of that. We got a wind right now. Here's the METAR, 170 at nine. 10 miles visibility. And uh, pretty much the same one we read off earlier. I just realized that. All right, let's go and take a look here. We're looking for the departure uh, message. It'll say DEP. So what are we looking at? This is called Digital ATIS. You can actually look at this in Tokyo, Japan and find out, oh my god, Philadelphia really is Philadelphia. No, uh, but no, seriously, you can see the weather. Okay, so you know right now, 180. Now, we already know that's changed. It's actually 170. So, we can use that as we track across the world. Okay, get an idea of what's going on here. And by the way, you can just see it went to GPS primary. Bear with me, I'll get the other one. And I also like to, I'm one of those that they got to be just in the right spots for my happy spot for me to be happy. <laughs> okay, so 180 at 9. So let's dig into this. There's our weather report at the top. We're departing 27 left. What the heck does that mean? That means we're coming from here somehow down to here. We're here to take off and it doesn't give a specificity as to are we using Sierra 3 or are we using Sierra 2 Sierra 1 just said 27 left so when they get you across 27 right and such you can just whatever you want to use be careful you got a 12,000 foot runway but realize this is all displaced so this number here is not 12,000 feet. You're probably 11 to maybe 10. All right. So that means you may not be able to do what you did on a full length. All right. So two seven left is what we're going to aim for right now. And there are no fat sim um, um, controllers up putting a... Um, ATIS out there for us. So, it's going to do this. This to plan. Now, on chart, we actually do not have a departure. One departure, and it looks like this. Straight out, Philadelphia 3. Philadelphia. Oh, sorry, folks. Freedom. <laughs> Make sense all right so here's what it is folks real simple in a nutshell two seven right uh, from 2200 local to 600 local this is nighttime departure straight out uh, expect by vector vectors to your uh, nav aid of choice which is in our case wood something uh, wooden is that right oh D? yeah D. so we'll go out turn uh, pretty simple. Otherwise, you do... Uh, oh, here's the 2200 deal insert. We'll make a turn away from houses. Oh my gosh, you know how they get when they hear an airplane go over at full power? Oh my gosh, they're on the phone. Could you get those planes to just be quiet? No. <laughs> Why'd you live by an airport? Oh. Uh, 
the house was just perfect. We just had to have it. Oh, those people cracked me up. But anyway, I digress. So, we're coming out of Philly. So we'll click the line select by Philly. Click departure. Click 27 left. Even though the winds are beginning to favor nines. We're going off 27. Insert. Now, the discontinuity remains because when we take off, we will go direct at Woodtown either by ATC's calling or when we feel like it. It's our call if it's us. Okay, now from here, let's just check the plan out, make sure things align halfway decently. All right, so, and we are going to be able to check it here as well by uh, making sure our nav display is set to plan and set a range that's not too close but yet not too far off. I set 20. And then we're just going to step. Rebel t Hey do. Hey do. Triple Tripid. Tree P O D. C P O D. See it? I like to kind of watch the the map over here. So CP and defense. Hang on, I lost my arrow. There we go. Tink, Lana, and Amy Lou. We'll, we'll end it there at Amy Lou. At Amy Lou's place. All right, we're back to the same thing we did at the uh, departure point. Click Charleston. Now we're clicking Arrivals. And now we get to choose. Again, check your ATIS. Again, we do not have VATSIM, so we go by the real one. If you so want to, you know, you could be that little rebel and say, I'm going to do a tailwind landing because I can. And you are more than welcome to, folks. Just hopefully not into somebody. I'm going to go with what they say here. So ILS to 1.5, which actually will dump me off pretty close to the terminals, if memory serves right. Uh, or we could do the RNAV Y to 2.1. Oh, now that makes me want to bring the chart up. How long's runway 2.1? See how 1.5 is going to dump you pretty close? 2-1 dumps you here, and it's also pretty close. So, the choice is yours. Do we go runway 1-5 or 2-1? Oh, all guesses are in. I'm going to go runway 1-5. Oh, wait. <laughs> wow. There's a land and hold short. I'd like to know how much runway that is. Sometimes it'll tell you. It does not say anything. Nope. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, so... Yeah, usually they uh, give you an idea. Is that? Oh, that's what that is. They give you an idea how much you have. <laughs> you're not landing and holding short on 3-3, unless you're like a little Cessna 172. <laughs> that's like putting one right here. <laughs> Although the guys that fly certain planes out at the airport I used to work at might make a taxiway if you put it there. <laughs> I'm not naming names or anything like that. They, uh, <laughs> he, uh, yeah. He says put it on the numbers He's before the numbers. All right, so we're going to go. Last chance. Uh, what's the wins? 200. All right, folks, if you're that hard up and can't really figure out, go to select. 2-1, one, 
Here's your RNAV. We can come straight in on bad meat. That's actually a big possibility in my mind. Otherwise, take a look at the uh, ILS. And we're going to have to go out here to come. I'm going to run the RNAV. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Did it say, hang on. Uh, something didn't seem right here. Hang on. RNAV, RNAV, hang on. Uh, ILS. Yankee. We didn't see Yankee. Actually, we didn't look very hard, so hang on. Uh, let's just, oh, not Philadelphia won't help us. Doggone it, Charleston. Approach. Yankee. Oh, here it is. All right, you see the difference? Uh, actually, now let's look at Amy Lou. She comes right in. At reserve, we can either... Okay, we're going to do Zulu. We are, because there's bad me right there. And if we do the 2-1 uh, Yankee... I didn't mean to do that. Duck on it. And you know how that goes. Uh, bad me isn't part of this. So I'm going to stick with uh, Zulu which is what we already have in place, will come off reserve to bad me right on in. The other part of this goes out to here and hooks you in on 1.5. So that means a 7,000 foot runway. Cool. And we are going again with Zulu. Amy Lou, bad me that I gotta double check. <laughs> Is it Amy Lou? Alright, let's check. What the? Alright, I need my route. Lana. Where the heck is Lana? All right, so we're just going to do Amy Lou with no transition. Unless, nope, there aren't any. Amy Lou 3. All runways. Okay. Insert. Now, there may or may not. Okay, so Lana does connect to Amy Lou. All right, and let's zoom in. There's uh, Amy Lou. Wilt, Crawl, Ford, Reserve. Okay, locking it in. Looks good. No, no um, discontinuities. Reserve out to bad me. Oh, wait. Bam D. My bad. I'll read the page here. Pam, Bam D. Zeppo. Packic. Hakic. The runway. And then out to Fepid. For our hold. Now, if we have to divert because of weather or whatever, uh, we could go Charleston, Philly, Flag, to Charlotte. Now, these discontinuities would be filled in with appropriate uh, departures and arrivals. Right now, I'm not going to worry. We're coming in. Yeah, you heard me say it. You've, if you've uh, watched Flying with Mike, if I say it, we do it. All right, so there you have it, folks. The flight is in. Now, one other thing you could do at this time is your secondary flight plan by clicking this and working it out. I just don't. Okay, I'm going to go to the RadNav page. Look good there to the Perf page. Click and put us back in. Ready to fly mode. All right, let's get over to performance. We have a few minutes and we're ready to go. Okay, performance reset. While you guys are looking there, I'm looking at the current METAR. That's 53 minutes old, 170. 
All right, that ain't real current. <laughs> See if I can't narrow it down a little for us. Doubtful, but you never know. 170 at 9. This is as of 2254. Yep. Not the same. So, I wish I knew which METAR they were going off of. It would really make... Would it make a huge difference? No. Uh, but it would be nice to know. Uh, 2990. And uh, we're dry anti-ice off. Uh, we're going to run with the air on. Now, here's where this page is cool. You can try a couple things out. Now, granted, dispatch will more than likely tell you what you need to do. Uh, but as pilot command, you have the right to verify and, if need be, change. All right, so we're going to try flex auto. What that means is it's going to look for the best flex takeoff, meaning powered back on our engine, still enough to get airborne to, to altitude at probably flaps one. And as predicted, and that's actually pretty good, folks. Uh, 20, almost 2,400 feet of runway to stop in. I'm taking full length, so I think that's good. And that's what we're going to use. So let's uplink. And you can just go this route too. 2990, 170, diagonal 9. Click. And again, folks, if you miss anything at all in here, don't forget we'll have this to YouTube uh, sometime here in the next day or two. Uh, there's a link, and there is a plethora, what a word, of videos up there for you. Okay, now, let's just say I decided to override this auto which said one and make it two. Everything's going to shift down. Duh. I come over here and put that here because what's going to happen, it doesn't know I'm thinking of flaps two for this departure. I put it in there, and then I would do takeoff request. You're going, well, why did you put in flex takeoff? It won't let you right now. And then I let it do its to send out, and then it's getting the information to send back via ACARS. Boom. Takeoff data uplink. Clear. Received. Here's your TOGA information, meaning taking the throttles all the way up. Otherwise, you're going to click to the flex position. And that's where we're going. Now, click flex takeoff. And now you see the 59, 2990 in the winds, and then the 147, 147. Now, mind you, um, we usually get the max, okay? If you aren't comfortable, but yet this is the V1 minimum, 109. If you're comfortable there, put that in when you go insert right there. That's what I do, folks. And then I'm going to go check somewhere. I'm pretty sure he's not up on this, but you never know. Black box just shocks me all the time. Usually in the fact he doesn't have my site or my uh, airport. This one he could and does not. Anyway, Black Box uh, is a real, was, and may still be a real bus driver, Airbus. Now he's uh, rated, and I'm sorry I don't have him here to verify. He's over in Europe, probably fast asleep. Um... A 787 driver now. Um, congratulations again, sir. Uh, but he has built this site. And if you go to it, it just gives you this little bit of extra data here and transition levels and all of that. Like, that's wrong. Uh, and what you do is just follow this link, folks, and that'll get you to him. Now, if you're in Europe, there is a really good chance he's got your airport. 
Um, there's the website for you. Um, check the list. Check it twice. You never know if it's naughty or nice. And um, you might find your airport in there. And like we know, our transition level should be 1-8-dun-dun. Sorry, we are not in Europe. Okay, and then we are set to go. Trim is there. There's your speeds. Everything's perfect. And with that, we are ready for startup. I can hear him going, what? Here we go. We're up and running on the ACARS page. Going to get us up and running here. I got to get my cheat sheet. Hang on. Uh, we are out. Oh, wait. I'm going to do another thing. I just realized. Glad I caught it. You will not hear anything, folks on ATC if I don't bring this up here. Don't ask me why. It's just being that way here of late. Alright, so we are AAL1471. We are not a Piper Arrow, but an A321. bat you don't have ATC if you don't get a squawk code right off the bat and forgive me if I'm repeating folks I just coughed so I think I was muted um, if you get a squawk code there's more than likely no ATC in your and we need six six four five six six four five all right and then I'm gonna push it right up to exponder all right we're ready to go folks so as i get ready to go through the startup i'm going to start getting rid of uh, uh the ground equipment ah keep coughing here folks All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Uh, as soon as we uh, get a full count taken, some minor things on the logbook attended to, we'll be ready for pushback. Should be an on-time departure. And as always, thanks for flying American. All right, folks, that means we are ready. Let's take a look outside. We're going to be flying in the dock. Oh, and I forgot my night light. Oh, what am I to do? Anyone else here to play with us? Does not appear so. All right, cool. All right, so cockpit lights as required. We are off on on dome. Uh, seat belts. All right, up top, beacon light. Not yet. Let's call. Oh, this. Oh no, it won't be. I was gonna say this could be fun, but I don't think he's gonna fall off the roof. Or one. And we go for the better pushback, folks, and it's free. Simple download. Put it in. Come on, else. Ground okay. cockpit, please show me where you want to go. All right. So, what we'll do... In the hole here. And then, for jet blast reasons, we're going to come up to here. Ground to cockpit. Toe is driving up. Okay, and we'll get the beacon on, close up the main door as soon as we see him. 
making sure he doesn't come across the roof like he did on us at a couple FedEx places. That was great. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Where are you? Did you get lost again? Better push back. There he comes out the building. I know he was supposed to come out here, but you know, it's that Philadelphia, you know, in him. Eight. Let's get off external power. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. Cleared to connect. Okay, and as soon as that door closes, we're going to get rid of the jetway. There you go, folks. Yeah, the jetways do tuck in like that there. Now we're just waiting for him to tell us. Release the brakes. All right. Fuel pumps are on. Clearance approved. Oh, you know what? So connected and bypassed and inserted. Release parking brake. Dot M-S-G-C-T-A-F. Uh-oh. Dot M-S-G-C... Oh, I know why. <laughs> K-B-H-L. <laughs> That's why. C T A F K P H L. There we go. Eighteen five. I'll get it eventually, folks. This may take the whole flight. All right. Go. Okay. So doors are closed. Let's go ahead and. Uh, Finish this up, uh, push back again with the brakes release, brakes off. Starting push back, and you may start engines. All right, and I am going to start the timer way over here. All right, here we go, folks, and I'm going to start cranking some engines. Number two. Okay. Now, I recommend starting them up as quickly as you can. Let me explain why. Uh, the big Neo engines, now this one doesn't have it. Sometimes you get in a cool down. And can be as much as well what was it uh devo had me said he was uh two minutes on one that's two minutes you gotta wait for the gearing or whatever to cool before you can it'll start spinning up that's something the electronic engine controllers control so all right so we're back here in the spot i don't really need to monitor this one and then we're going to pull up. Technically, I probably should have been cranking them here. Uh, but I decided one is okay. Aircraft release line. If you look at Philly and you zoom in on Google, you'll actually see these. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Brake set. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. Everything looks stable. Alright, so we're starting up engine number one. Once we're started, I start a timer. Three minutes to warm up, and then we start taxiing to seven left. Not that I'm racing controllers to get out of here, folks. 
I just want to get the flight flown, get a great stream in here, and uh, have some fun. So, all right, so the engine's uh, spooling up. I didn't catch which way he said he was going to go. I think he's going to go to the left. So it's disconnected. I'm by Aspen has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have a good flight. Thanks uh, for the pushback. Thanks for it being free. Better pushback. There he goes. All right, there's the avail. Timer start. Make sure we get our indication of flat of gear pins and we did let's get into it and get this bird going All right after start parking brake set engine mode to All right to the top APU bleed off now normally I would have had the set arm again verify one hour, wow, and the ATIS or BTAR is really old here, 2990, so we'll have to go. Eight minutes ago, 2995, on the ATIS. Hey, light ring, this Charleston, dang it, he did it again. Ten minutes ago, 2990. Okay, um, still the same information. Okay, continuing on, let's get back up here and shut that EP. Otherwise, there's a good chance I'll forget. Okay, uh, flight directors are on, landing constraints. VOR, 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 VOR. All right, going across, speed is set, heading is set by uh, nav computers, and we're going to go straight up to 36,000, barring any in route stuff. All right, going on down, auto brake, X, flaps, verified, uh, spoiler. Arming the spoilers. We'll get into this the next time we fly the Airbus 11. A lot of people have a lot of questions in X-Plane about ready for pushback. Uh, S checks, transponder. Put that up. We're going to go ahead, go all the way on. Radar, all the way on. Finally, cockpit door lock, flight control check, and we'll set our trim. A little easier to set trim in this plane than a Boeing. A little bit more of an exact science, so to speak. Um, when it says set it to this trim level 0 0.3 up, we gotta do is follow it right here. 0, 0.0 up. Well, we need that to say 0 0.3. Instead of guesstimating where it actually is on the numbers. Right to the left. To the right. To the left. To the right. Down. I feel like an aerobics instructor. Ready to taxi, folks. All right, uh, taxi clearance. Okay, here we go. Get out of the way for others to do the same. Philadelphia traffic, uh, American 1447 taxiing to runway 27 left. Hello. 
11. Y is 54 and 6 over by you. I don't even need Yes, that's way over to the right. Hi, folks. We're on our way. Welcome aboard. Thank you uh, for being a part of Flying with Mike today. We're really hoping uh, to have some fun today. Not sure if we're going to play Stream Raiders or not. Uh, we'll see uh, how things go. Um, I'm just really not, I'm not as into it as I try, as I sound sometimes. It just, I don't get it. So. And I'm not getting an overwhelming response to, you know, flying it, using it while in flight. All right, there goes American 5406, obviously using uh, 12800 instead of CTAF. That's a big problem here. I can hear the cadet in there talking away. But again, thanks uh, for being a part, and uh, hope you all enjoy. Uh, we're getting ready to get in a gigantic emo. That was three days ago. Not bad. Fucker, I thought you were in here. Gives me a chance to touch base with my uh, uh, chat room. Taxing. Okay. Not seeing much. Okay. Well, I hope you all enjoy. It's fun to fly, and uh, hopefully we'll hold for a minute down here, let y'all get in, because I know y'all like watching the take off. All right, final checks here, folks. Uh, we need to do get our flight attendants. for take folks welcome back one and all we're ready for takeoff i just got to do test as we roll into position do our final checks for takeoff weather radars on rudder trims transponder elevator trim all set here we go philadelphia traffic uh, american 1447 departing 27 left Correction, that's American 1471. Hey, final checks. Here we go. Uh, weather radar, trans, rain radar. the reset anyway. Here we go, folks. Lights are on. Fifty-ish percent.
like the auto thrust kicked up. All right, well, let's uh, go ahead, turn it to 267. Correction. Alright folks, we are on our way. What I did up here is I took the nav display and put her in nav to find it better. And then off we go. And then I'm going to push the range out a little. Uh, just so I get a little better on the TCAS slash weather slash a lot of things. And let's see if there's anything to cause alarm. Yeah, Jacksonville, one of two of those may control us. But that's about it. That's a ways off though. Actually, is it Jacksonville? Is it? Let's find out. Oh, yeah. Let's go ahead and get the flaps up. Right after takeoff, gears up, spoilers disarm, make sure no white ribbon, flaps are up, thrust set, and uh, we're in uh, climb mode, nose light technically can go off. We'll leave it for now. And uh, auto pilot and flaps are up. Alright folks, we're on our way to Charlie Town, so should be there. I don't know. Let's see what the uh, Oblay says for Hour and a half? Well, we'll see if it's uh, quicker than that. I do know it's about a two hour flight. Alright, we are on our way, folks. Right, there's 10,000 feet. We're on our 
our way, folks. Beautiful wing shot. Wow. All right. There you go, folks. You know, there are some benefits to flying at this hour. Problem is, I think by the time we get there, while it'll be easy to find the airport, won't be able to see the airplane at night. Looks like we may have someone coming out of La Garbage Can or JFK. Uh, probably La Garbage Can where that is going. And one that departed for Austin or points beyond. So it's a little busy of an airport tonight. Yeah, actually, you can sneak in, sneak out of Charleston. Minus, you might have to talk to Jacksonville, but usually it's not too busy. Especially for those of you out there trying to get your feet touched, you know, move up a little closer to the Vatsim waters. Charleston's a good place to start and learn from. One of many, I just point that out because the ATC, now the old, and that gives you Jacksonville, which will give you some something to listen to on the ground. Kind of get familiar with it and then kind of ease yourself in. But make sure you're in an airplane, know how to fly. May want to just go clear, no weather, nothing, and just fly, you know, in the pattern or fly something local. So what if he tells you to land with such and such runway? If you got no weather, it doesn't matter. So. Uh, but anyway, uh, I hope you all do get your feet wet with that sim. I know they can be, oh, we saw how much fun they can be over the weekend in Cancun. But uh, usually they're not bad. There's a couple places historically with me that just, just fall flat. Uh, but... Uh, and I also try to avoid those places, uh, sometimes like the plague. So, but anyway, give it a try. Get in there. I don't want to be the one to discourage you. I want you to get in there and give it a try, folks. So, all right. All right, we're coming up on transition, and all that does is sets everybody's altimeter above it to the same numbers. Europe happens to be quite a bit lower than ours. Again, take your time learning other countries because they are different. The basics may be there, but there are a lot of underlying differences. And as we cross transition, I will be right back.
Hi, right, folks. I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, we are uh, climbing up here, and we're down to an hour's worth of flying time. So I hope you enjoy. As you can see up in the uh, upper left corner, we got some traffic going uh, one of the directions. Hard to tell. I'm thinking south. All right, we'll turn off the wing lights to be nice so they can sleep. At cruise, we'll put her to seatbelt light off and they can enjoy. Oh, what a beautiful view. I think we ought to just set it right here, folks. <laughs> the whole way. Son, you have to stay right there. <laughs> now, I know that is going to happen. But that is just spectacular. Let me just make sure I got a screenshot already of that. Oh, yeah. All right, folks. Yeah, that is beautiful. Some of the perks of flying at night is, you know, beautiful sunsets or early morning, beautiful sunrise. But, you know, for me, I like to go outside the plane. Let you be able to see it as we get darker and darker. Now, we may be able to do this all the way to Charleston, but it's going to get harder and harder. Look at all the traffic, folks. Now I'm beginning to think what we saw out the windshield is actually going northbound. Got another one back here. Find out what we got. Looks like one of them's American Johnson KSMF. What? I don't know where that is. KSMF. Anyway, the other looked like maybe a jet blue. I, I think he may not have a flight plan. Yeah, he does not have a... He did not come from Sacramento, <laughs> California. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like we got... You know, and that's the other neat thing. You get the altitude, you can start seeing contrails of aircraft you wouldn't know were out there because they're not on your TCAS or anything like that. And uh, just kind of cool. And we're above the Tracon for uh, Potomac. Uh, but we will probably be into our descent for Jacksonville, or if not very close to it. I don't know where we start our descent. All right, folks, we are over Salisbury. Don't see any airports we'd be all familiar with uh, right around us. Across the bay over there is the uh, Naval Air Station, Patak, Pax, Paxton. Uh, Pax, a lot of them call it. Uh, so, Pax River, I think, actually. 
So. All right. But anyway, folks, we're on our way. Thank you again for uh, joining us tonight. I know I'm running extremely late. Uh, it's just one of those days where, uh, hang on a second, let's get a little more cruise set up here. I'm going to go to 80. All right. And basically, we have airports up here. That way, if something happens, I have something quick to reference. All right. But anyway, we had a lot going on today. Um. It's no secret, folks. I haven't held it back from anyone. Um, I've been without a job now for almost two months. Job market, not all that great. Um, just, I mean, there's a lot of jobs, but... I don't mean to sound uppity or anything like that, but... There's just a lot of jobs, folks, that don't resonate with me. And I... The other problem is I really don't know what resonates with me. So, bear, you know, forgive me for bearing that out with y'all, but... It's... Just not easy. And, uh... Anyway, I'm not going to dwell on it, because... Bringing us down, bringing me down, and... I use this to really help keep me up. So, but I do appreciate y'all being here. Thank you so much. Uh, for those that follow, thank you so much. That just means a lot to us. Especially those that uh, hit that subscribe button over at YouTube. Folks, just uh, put things, you know, straight. If you're not very YouTube savvy, uh, the difference in Twitch and YouTube is when you click subscribe over there, it doesn't cost you anything. When you click it here, uh, it costs five bucks unless you use Prime. By the way, that day is coming up that you can get a discount through Prime. <clears throat> Not Prime Prime. Uh, well, let me rephrase that. I don't know if the Prime that Twitch uses is on that day too. I haven't gotten a notice. I may have just misspoke, so forgive me on that, folks. Um, but it costs, and uh, but there is a perk. You do get ad-free viewing. You weigh it out. I, I'm not going to sit here and preach to you. You need to subscribe. You need to subscribe. No. I'd like to preach you need to follow. <laughs> but I, I don't even do that, folks. I'd leave it up to you. Uh, that watch, if you like the content, I'd leave it up to you to decide uh, to at least follow. If not, go the next step. If you're over on YouTube, you only have the one step to subscribe. And we are so thankful. We are clo closing in on 500 uh, subscribers over there, which boggles my mind, so... Uh, we'll see uh, how that goes. So, boy, the triple seven gauntlet is still hot and heavy in uh, the VAT sim world. Hey, I'm not gonna sit here and knock y'all. Enjoy them. All right, so. All right, so we are about 50 minutes out. Let's see what uh, we're showing here. Well, we're not even to full climb yet. <laughs> out of climb. We're just about. Uh, so see what we got distance-wise. I may put Stream Raiders up. Like I said, folks, in the beginning, it's been a trial here. I'm just not certain how much 
the audience is resonating with it. And again, my YouTube folks, you can't even interact with it unless you come over live. And some of you may not, for a lot of reasons, want to come over to Twitch. So I get it. Um, so, yeah, it, it puts me in a little spot. Uh, but I had some people asking me. So I thought, uh, hey, I'll give it a, you know, give it that. Mm, let's see how it works and give my best to promote it. And uh, I don't know. I think it's just kind of falling flat except for a couple of people. So we'll have to kind of weigh that out. Also, upcoming this week, we're going to try to get back on track here, folks. I know we missed out on the FedEx flight. Um that was supposed to happen Monday turned into a nice little VFR flight that also got cut short uh, so that is my apology there folks we will one fly out that FedEx flight and two finish that VFR flight uh, if not in add to it so uh, all right so now we're in cruise First things first. All right, seatbelt signs off. Everything's looking good. 200 miles. Okay. Now, you know what? Give it one more week. May get one, may get two. I don't know. I'm thinking one. All right, folks, as you can tell, the countdown's on. We'll see what we can see here. Uh, feel free to click in uh, streamraiders.com slash flying with Mike. Together, we'll try to defeat our next uh, uh, battlefield. And I'll be totally honest, folks. There are things in there I can use. I just don't know how to. So be back after the break.
All right, welcome back, folks. I'm just looking at Saribot. I'd like... Huh. All right, well, I was just looking at a couple things for Saribot. I, I'm just uh, not seeing them avail. They're doing what I, I've seen on other streams, and that's okay. The big one, uh, the two biggies, are three biggies are taken care of, so... Um, so we'll go with that. All right, folks, again, if you have any questions, comments, hey, by all means, use the chat uh, chat room there or uh, hit me off, off stream at our Discord. Uh, there's an invite to it. Let me know. I'd love to help you out uh, best I can, and I do research if need be to help you out because uh, – my goal, one of the big goals of this stream is to just help you get off the armchair and into the cockpit flying. And if you want assistance with getting on to VATSIM or aircraft, and uh, there is a pilot out there that's asked me to help him out with the uh, 727, uh, I'd love to help him anytime he's free. So, um, so yeah, just uh, let me know either here in the chat. I'll do my best to catch it here in the chat, but the best place is Discord. Uh, that way I can rattle my cage if you need to, if I'm not answering. Oh, I was going to get into before the break and got distracted. Uh, what do we got coming up? Tomorrow, European guys, barring, barring any last-minute hiccups, which I don't see right now, but they could. Uh, we're, we're back in your territory. Matter of fact, we're in Italy. Italy. And uh, ending up, we're going to start in Milan. And end up in Palmero. And where we go in between? Go check our about section or Discord live stream schedule. Then Thursday, this is a start time to be determined. Uh, we do have an appointment that day, but the way I'm hearing it, I could be available much earlier than I thought. Uh, but we've got a, a destination of the month for Mac Air to fly to. In the King Air. I'll give you that one, folks. And then we're going to wrap up the week on Friday. Back in Europe doing some uh, island hopping in Greece. Some more. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like it when I go this road, but I'm, I'm kind of trying to fly to some of the close by airports of where Paul the Biblical... Um, Apostle went through Greece and Asia. I'm trying to go to airports that are close to those areas. I think I've got these narrowed down, well, uh, to, well, Skathos, we never heard of, but, well, we, we have in the aviation world, but I don't think they had airplanes like this back in uh, uh, that time frame, about 2,000 years ago. Um, but Athens... Uh, and we'll get into it as one. The next one, I want to save till we get there because I don't know. It's the closest I think I'm going to get to it, just like Ephesus. So, again, we're just kind of having fun. Uh, you know, I love reading the Bible and just getting into it and uh, learning about Jesus. And, uh, just, oh, my God. If you guys haven't watched the show Chosen, they're in season four now. Look for it on uh, in your app store. 
and you can watch it on your phone for free or like I do uh, port it to your TV because I had somebody that I just can't watch it on a small screen shoot it up to your TV <laughs> so he didn't like my answer uh, you know it is what it is but anyway a great show Paul comes after Jesus and I just it just amazes me their stories so that's why we're following the trying to do our best in in Greece to hit them and we're gonna probably not hit 90% of them but we're gonna give it our best shot a couple of them I can't find an airport close close by so that's what we have lined up uh, we hope you enjoy them uh, let's see oh that's even pretty neat up uh, it's dropped down enough folks yep oh, it's pretty enough Now, on a real flight, folks, more than likely, that lighting would be more heavily subdued. Um, but I've never really flown a night flight. Well, yeah, I have. Take that back. And it was pretty dark, <laughs> except for the floor lighting and uh, the over-the-head lighting of the bins dimmed out. So, yeah, it was sleepable. As best as a coach seat can be sleeping. All right, we are 148 miles out. I don't know which center grabs us first, so we're going to just do the uh, arrival brief here real quick, give you a overview of what we got lined up, and then... Uh, Get ready to talk to controllers and uh, stream raiders. All right. All right, so you can see on the map where we are. We're coming into defense. So the Amy Lou 3 is what we have planned. Now, uh, Amy Lou 3 RNAV is for all runways. Um, and I don't see any restrictions for turbojets, so... Uh, all aircraft can fly it. So for, and we're going to be coming into Amy Lou. So from Amy Lou, we track 219 to Wilt. Here, let me kind of... And then on to Craw. Oh, I'm sorry. And then on to Ford. And then to Reserve. And that's when these little, we'll call them transitions, even though technically Raz and... Mr. Pitt are the uh, transitions for the approach. Okay, we'll call these for us. Okay, so if we're going out to 15, we'd fly uh, 250. We're going out to Bamdi uh, 247 and expecting runway 21, expect the RNAV. It doesn't tell you Yankee or Zulu, just to expect it. And then for the other, you know, the reciprocals of those, their uh, flights, okay? For us, at or above 3,000 at Bamdi. Okay, at or above 11 at Crawl, and between 14 and 23, or what our controller is gonna tell us, once we cross in. And, kind of stink, well, we're still out. We're looking at Lana. So we're going to be uh, pretty close. Amelou, 
I'm going to plan for 14, so 14 minus 36. Bet y'all didn't expect to have school. Time, let's see, plus, uh, let's go with about 76 miles from Amy, oh, uh, yeah, from Amy Lou to start our descent. I'm having a feeling Lana will be pretty close. All right, let's actually find out, shall we? So yeah, I think uh, we'll be pretty close. All right, and uh, then we transition, like I said, to the RNAV. Now this is actually a, uh, a navigation performance run, meaning in reality, we might actually look like on an ILS, even though we're not. Sometimes my gauges show it, sometimes they don't. And I don't know what I did to make them show that if there is something I got to do. But this is the RNAV, RNIP Zulu, runway 21 at Charleston. Okay. Frequencies are across the top. Again, d is our friend. All we have to do is click here to get it. And we have a VAT sim. Uh, really, not much. Ha! Ain't that nice of them. <laughs> 2104, 10 miles, broken at 45. Folks, technically visual approaches, but we'll stick to the RNAV to be safe. And yeah, usually, and we're alpha. Real world, let's look at it. Um, so we have CBs, distance southwest, cool. Simultaneous approaches for 1, 5, and 2, 1. <laughs> Good luck with land and hold short on that one. If you look at the chart, you'll see what I mean. Uh, all aircraft read back your hold shorts instructions assigned. And uh, then there's the notums that are applicable. And yes, this will all read out on the frequency, just so you know. There is a segment for Charleston, two of them. And one for uh, con uh, convection, one for weather. Uh, probably there's probably one out there for turbulence, too. All right, now this one here, taxiway delta, non-movement area, use caution. Okay, that's over on the military side. Okay. All right, so RNAV, so there's no frequency here. It's built, it comes in on the uh, hard uh, information on your uh, avionics. Uh, but the final approach course is 211. Uh, Packet, 1100 feet. And we should be on a glide slope, but that's 1000 feet. So that's giving you a little hint. Uh, the hint is we're 43 feet above. So that's the difference. Um, 384 feet, folks, is our minimums for this airport. Or you can dial in 427. What is the difference? Bold, that is your um, altimeter, what you see in that altimeter altitude tape. Your radar altimeter is what's in the uh, parentheses. That usually shows up under your PFD in the bottom half of the world, the brown. And then up top, you'll see your minimums that you chose. Uh, so we're going to go Bamdi, Zelpo, Packic, and then the runway. Again, Packic at 1,100 feet, and that's three miles out. Finally, again, we need a 
mile and an eighth visibility to shoot this approach and we need at least 384 folks your METAR has to read 400 or above to be legal on the runway you are not going to get something that says broken at 384 feet you might hear it on the ATIS I don't know if that would be even on the ATIS and it would be official your METAR is what you're going to go off of or your ATIS or what the tower reports and then ultimately when you shoot it and you can't see it you got to go around can't go well Joe Schmo made it why can't I that's what I do now that's on a flight sim with nobody behind me folks so there's your charts for the flight now the fun part again performance Yes, we get to play again. All right, let's hit reset. Let's uh, find out how close to the METAR we are. 2356, hour and two minutes old here, folks. This information is accurate to that. 220 F4. Yeah, check the um, same thing. All right, so temperature outside 25 degrees, 2995. That seems kind of heavy. No, actually it's not. Uh, it's about a little bit. All right, there we go. Just had an update for NavGraph. And we'll just keep it, that'll work. Uh, now. You have 7,000 feet of runway, so we're going to start low, and I'm going to guarantee you those green lines will probably be up here. And uh, not advised. There we go. So here we go, 4,600 feet, three quarters of the way down, leaving us 2,200 feet to not run off the runway. And we're wet. So we'll have an approach speed of 140. Uh, we need 4,600, prefer 4,700, and uh, be fine. Okay, so we'll get this all updated here later as we get closer. All right, folks, there's your arrival brief. Hope you liked it. Nine minutes to the battle. Nine minutes to the battle. If you've uh, new to the stream today, here you go. Link for joining the battle on stream raiders folks is just a simple little place your uh, team your players on the map and in nine minutes i'll press start and we see if we win or not up ahead is top of descent like i said i do not know we're going to start our descent before talking to control. So if you're listening, you better get in here. All right, we need to enter our data here. So what I do, make it real simple, folks. Copy, not copy, paste, but get the you get the gist. Okay, Q&H, you got to do it in this format. Two. Nine dot five temperature two five two hundred no two twenty diagonal hole. Okay, now we're to that. Let me. Um, what I'm going to do is pull it up. So what I do, what I I I watch the video, folks. Uh, and the uh, uh, host asked the question, okay, what do we put in for MDA or DH? What is the difference? First off, there is no difference in reality, except 
accept how where you're measuring from so at this airport you are um, 43 feet above sea level on the touchdown zone okay so the minimums above and then the parentheses are above ground which is where your metars are so Um, 427 MSL, they say is what they'll put in the MDA. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, if we were Cat 2, Cat 3, now I th want to say he said something about RNAV, but I, I can't remember that and I can't find it. Um, then we'd go DH. So either way, folks, you're at the same point in the sky. One's just reading it from the ground. One's reading it from sea level. Long story short. Oh, sorry about that. All right, now I am seeing what looks like some activity going on here. Wow. Rambling Rye, uh, Tori Vopel, and AJTC Gels. Thank you for uh, helping us out over here. I saw you play some pieces. Thank you. For Stream Raiders in five minutes. <clears throat> and that'll probably be about the time I start my descent to 14,000 feet. Now, one other thing, the checklist, some of them that I use, as soon as I find it again, 30 miles out, you can start your descent. I'm half tempted to do that. <laughs> Adjust for what he tells me. To wait for 25 because he's gonna ping me here real soon. All right, and uh looking good uh, checklist wise I got a couple things I'm gonna set up once we start but we've got the ATIS we've got the METAR I'll show you how you can pull it up on your uh, FMC's here in a second I want to get into the descent here uh, we're also going to get well we've got the performance the, the decision height the star all of that set landing is at elevation auto and uh, we'll monitor the, the uh, top of descent. I'll also go in and show you one another way to get winds inserted in here. I'm going to go ahead and start our descent. Okay, we are starting down about a thousand or so feet a minute, and then uh, it'll push over when we get to that squiggly line around La uh, Lana. All right, so METAR, okay. So I'm going to use this one over here. Um, let's go to McDo menu, ATSU, AOC. And we could just see what happens with Destination ATIS. Now that we have something potentially out there, we might get it. Look at that. The ATIS Alpha, as of 2356, which I think is uh, over an hour old. Yeah. Um, but again, now there's a lot more information. Uh, we can also, same screen, click Weather, Charleston. Metar. When the asterisk comes back, 
go to return received messages now you're going to get charleston and um charlotte and here's your zero zero five six calm oh wow <laughs> so yeah now another way to input the winds you could go here hit the uh, function twice this will print your data which I don't know what that would look like or you can request it here or come back to flight plan on the right side click that line select that takes care of if you need to set a speed constraint altitude constraint your steps look at that access wind there's all our winds coming down all right so we got all of that put in mcdo we said medium um approach briefing complete descent started folks we are on our way and should be about ready to find out which one be who we talked to where'd it go And Hawker, fight it. Would you know, Hawker? It's about time. I've got so many broken skies out here. I don't know why. And they all tell me it was some Hawker guy that broke them. So I, I don't get it. <laughs> hey, you got two seconds. Uh, you're out of time. All right, folks, hang on. Let me uh, do my thing comes the playing field and like it wow we got rambling ray tori vorpal ajtc jealous and myself in the game here we go can we win Hey, we win. Hype it up, folks. Oh, we went to an ad break. Ah. Tori Vorpal and Rambling Ray, thank you so much. You guys got the, uh, the treasure. And I hate commercials sometimes. I didn't even see it coming. <laughs> Usually I try to hold off if I didn't, but uh, I had, would you know now he's gonna be pissed at me and probably send me down to Jacksonville and then come back up. <laughs> I don't know if it's him. All right, let me clear my screen. I don't know if we're gonna get another battle in uh, 13 minutes. No, we're not. So I'm going to clear that. Thank you guys for playing along, though. We sure appreciate. And what frequency did he yell at me? 127875. 27875. Seven, eight, seven, five. Jacksonville Center, American 1471 with you. We're descending through flight level 270 for 14,000 for Charleston with Alpha. American 1471, Jacksonville Center, good evening, I did. I did? 
I just told you who I am. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. As you can tell, we won. Sorry, I tried to do those outside. Contact about uh, 20 miles north of the Myrtle Beach Airport. Descend via the MO3 arrival, runway 21 transition. Runway 15 transition, Charleston altimeter is 2995. Expect. We're going to say the visual, but have the ILS frequency programmed in there. Yeah, copy all that. Uh, we're actually set up for the RNAV uh, Zulu 421. Roger, 21 is, is a departure runway only. Oh! Well, then we'll adjust for 15. Where did I not see that in your ATIS? Let us uh, go and peek at it real quick. Elevation 295, turn left heading 090. Ah, that's why. Alright, uh. Elevation 295. Okay, on the fly. Love doing these. Okay, real quick, guys, let you all see what uh, changes we have. All right. Okay, I'm going to go over to Fat Sim. And remember, all we had was to about here, and that was it. Well, he's added more so in. I'll Good evening. Climbing, Landing 15, departing 21. I bad. All right, so arrival, ILS, still doing the Amalu. I think we're going out to Luther, though. Uh, let's take a look here. Yeah, we'll just go out to Luther. Well, that's a long way. Elite 295, turn right, heading 150. Right 150, Elite 295. Charleston information, Bravo now current, wind calm, altimeter 293. Daytona information, Juliet now current, wind calm, altimeter 3001. All right, so we're planned for Luther, Cress. All right, so instead now, folks, we're going to come into reserve out to Cress. Turn northward towards... Allegiant 2248, turn right heading 150. And that'll put us right in. The reason for the discontinuity, folks, is we're not going direct. About seven miles from Bevet. It basically, for you guys that fly Boeings, it would be equivalent to a vector. Okay, let's... Uh, Head over here. Update to one five. Ten degrees to the right, a little bit more, please. Ten to the right, illusion two ninety five. It's not updated yet in here. Uh, real. Okay, so calm. Myrtle Beach information, golf now current, one, wind 170 at 6, altimeters 295. Allegiant 295, you are uh, 7 miles from Uxdep, maintain 3000 until established on the Well, we're the going to do that. Low. Alright, so Thank a little adjustment. Establish. 
Okay, and that's how we adjust, folks. Ooh, look at this. Some storms up ahead. Oh, they're going to be, it looks like, south of us. Okay. There's our airport. Honest. He said to send on the arrival. Amy Lou will put us three thousand. I think we're okay, folks. I think I'll keep us in this. Uh, wind at Myrtle, 170618, clear to land. One eight, clear to land, at least 2048. Believe 295, you're number two, about five miles behind your company traffic, who's about five miles from the field. Uh, wind is 170618, clear to land. Myrtle, 18, clear to land, number two, region 295. Well, looks like we are going to have some weather. Okay, crawl at 11,000. I think we got that. All right, continuing our checks. November 757, Mike Whiskey leaving my airspace to the south of Miami is offline under services of Terminal Real Street approved. Okay, Monitored we by do the one set, auto brake, reset, descent, landing lights at 10,000. Okay. Okay, according to this, it looks like we're not in the soup. C.
Okay, I think we are on profile here, folks. Press at 3,000, I think we're make it. One three five uh, nine two American fourteen seventy one. Jacksonville Center, American 1471, five miles from Crease, inbound Charleston. American 1471, Jack Center, I didn't copy American 1471, walked on.
And Jacksonville Center, American 1471. We got the runway in sight. American 1471, clear visual approach. Runway 15. Clear visual 15, American 1471. Delta 413 to send me the Grinch 5 arrival, Orlando landing to the south, Orlando altimeter is 302. Alright, send me a Grinch 5 arrival, uh, Orlando landing to the south, we've got the weather Delta 413. American 1471, the wind at Charleston, calm, runway 15, clear to land. Clear to land, 15, American 1471. Be my bird. Pensacola information alpha now current wind two three zero one three alpha two nine nine six. thing to come down for nothing. There we go. Sink rate. Sink rate. One thousand. Hundred above. Four hundred. Minimum. Three hundred. Go ahead with the approach request. Two hundred. Uh, if I wasn't covering the whole thing, I would say yes. But I'm covering fifty-eight for fifty. Right 40, now, so 30, I'll 20, give you the best recall, I can, but 10, I can't guarantee it. Roger, you can uh, proceed the initial approach fix for our, the RNAV to right. 58, give me a call when you are there. I'm treating you as a VFR because you were a VFR when you left me, so I'm assuming you're still VFR. And if you want to do the circle, I mean, it's up to you. You'll, you'll be a VFR anyway, so you can do it if you want to do it that way. Roger. American 1471, welcome to Charleston. Straight ahead to Alpha. Have a good one. Alpha, uh, American 1471. Delta 661, descend via the bridge 5 arrival. Orlando landing to the south. Orlando, up to 302.
All right, here we go, folks. We're here. Sorry, I was very quiet there. We uh, had some fun getting in here. I'll be curious if I get gigged. Frontier 250, expect the ILS approach runway 18. If you do get the field in sight, we'll switch it, but right now it's saying scattered at 1500, so. All right, folks, I'm just running through lights, flag. Okay, we can have that even turned on. <laughs> and we're just going to go for Bravo 1. I had Bravo 2, but we'll take Bravo 1. So, I hope you enjoyed, folks. A little fun flight. A little bit of weather waiting for us. Really don't think you'd park this big beast right here, but we'll do it. America 1046 Technical Center, Squawk 6004, and I did. Go 1030, defend maintain, play level 310. Defend maintain, play level 310, very heavy. Ah, uh, Jack, good evening. This is Elton Allen. I don't find where you are. 380. Okay, now, five Jack, Center. Good evening. Welcome back, my friend. Uh, I dent for me. All right. American 1046 radar contact north of the Baron VOR. Does that mean uh, maintain flight level 330? All right. Air Canada 905 radar contact. About you did a great job, folks. I, I'm not going to complain. Great job uh, by uh, Jackson. Uh, just making sure everything. Uh, okay. Leave in my airspace to the south. Uh, Tampa and Miami are both offline. Radar services are terminated. Frequent change approved. Monitor advisory one, two, but have a safe flight. You're welcome. 0958, the wind at Daytona, calm. Runway 26 right, cleared to land. 35 right, cleared to land. Definitely got a lot of, lot of things going on here, folks. All right. Um, I'm going to let him stay up here in the background as we... Uh, American 1028, leaving my airspace to the north. And sadly, Washington is offline. Radar service is a 10-minute proof to approve. Monitor uh -oh. everyone to have a safe flight. A little harder than I thought. I appreciate, appreciate you being here, American 1028. We'll talk to you next time. See you next time. Oh, I think I already did. I get no points. Ah, hard landing. Oh well, that's why I say folks, I haven't done that in a while. Okay, well, oh, and I had network set to offline. Oh, well. Oh, well, let's see how bad Sim Toolkit. That didn't really feel too bad. 
534, so they're in the ballpark with them. Okay, so let's take a look at it, shall we? Actually, I want to do one thing here quick. All right, that looks like everybody's All right, so I just uh, killed the uh, ATC. All right, so let's take a look. All right, uh, view the details. All right, so an hour and 30 minute flight, 470 feet a minute. Uh, just under 4,000 kilograms of fuel. 1.6 G's at 530 feet per minute. Eh, little rough. A little rough approach. I'm not going to be on totally <laughs> without telling you that, folks. Good thing is we landed 14 feet off the center line, 1,500 feet down the runway. Good news there. Bad news was the landing itself. Um... All right, so we're back up here. Oh, they got me on a whole bunch of things. All right, let's kind of watch this. I'm trying to S-curve it, folks, in. And I'm also having a problem with getting her to descend all at the same time. That's why we did a lot of S's. Now I can see, I think we're uh, beginning to line up on the pappies. All right, folks, sorry about that. We were in commercial again. Um, so here we go. Did a lot of S's to get in here. Um, stable. Got a little low on the approach. I'd actually taken over the throttle at this point. Yeah, that was a little rough. Okay, let's go back, look at it again. Okay, yeah, that was a little rough.
That view wasn't too bad. I think things were a little exaggerated. Well, you can't really, you know, I can say that, but it is what it is. Real pilot's going to think, God, that's not on my plane. <laughs> For all I know, it is. Not sure how well this will look from the tower. That's not too bad. All right, folks. Well, usually I play music at this point. Well, you know, sometimes I forget. All right, folks. Well, let's go ahead and wrap it up for tonight. Thank you, folks, for being a part of Flying with Mike. It really, really was a pleasure to fly this fun flight from uh, Philadelphia to Charleston, South Carolina. Folks, if you're not familiar with Charleston, South Carolina, you Boeing guys ought to be. The 787s are made here. Seen the plant. Pretty uh, impressive. I didn't get to go inside. But it was pretty impressive on the outside. So, but folks, we're going to wrap it up tonight. Uh, what a fun flight. Uh, let's go ahead and put her in the gate. Start putting it back together. So, get the jetway over here. All right, and here they come, the brigade. All right, well, folks, it's been a pleasure tomorrow. I really hope to get back in at my normal time. Uh, get these two fun flights in Europe. Like I said, check them out if you're here on the stream. If you're on YouTube, check our Discord channel. Discord's right here. And uh, you'll find out the aircraft, but we're flying from Milan, Italy tomorrow. To Palmero. Uh, however, that's not a hundred percent. But we are flying. The flight will start in Milan, and the stream will end in Palmero. We'll see you for the flight tomorrow. Plan eleven o'clock Central Time, sixteen hundred Zulu. Hope to see you there, folks. We're going to look for someone to hand this off to, and I really hope you all have a great night. God bless you all. Let me see who's waiting and lurking for us out there. Oh, man. Oh, man. Quite a few that we follow. Huh? Making my job a little more different. Difficult. And why don't we raid Mr. Leroy? So, folks, I hope you all have a great night. And, uh, again, we'll see you tomorrow. 16 Zulu is my prayerful time to start. 11 o'clock Central. Milan. See you then.